Hello and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. I'm John and today we're going to take a look at the DeskPi Pro case for the Raspberry Pi 4. It includes two full-size HDMI ports, easy access to the micro SD slot, M.2 and 2.5 inch SSD drive support, and more. Let's check it out. We'll start off with the unboxing of the DeskPi Pro. This particular unit included the Raspberry Pi 4 8GB model. It was pre-installed, so we just have an empty box, so no concerns there. It also included a micro SD sleeve for inserting it into your PC, a standard HDMI cable, which is a little over 3 feet long and about 40 inches, and of course the DeskPi Pro. The unit I received for review came all set up and ready to go. Therefore, it isn't necessary to open it up, but I will in this video because I'd like to install an internal 2.5 inch SSD and see how it all goes together. This case is made of aluminum. It includes the GPIO extender to the back. It has easy access to the micro SD card. It includes two full-size HDMI ports, two front-facing USB 2.0 ports, an ice tower cooler to keep the CPU cool, an M.2 to SATA adapter board, a wall charger, a USB 3.1 connector, and of course a manual. I'll go ahead and flip through it. If you'd like to see any of this, you may want to pause the video and get a good look. It also includes this troubleshooting card, which may be helpful should you run into any problems. You may be able to find a solution right here. Now let's go ahead and open the box for the accessories. And uh, let's see here, we'll just dump them all out here. There's quite a few. First off, we have a USB Type-A to USB Type-C cable for charging. A USB adapter for the SATA connection. A silicone thermal pad, screws, and an Allen wrench for assembly. As well as the micro SD card with Pi OS pre-installed with the DeskPi Pro software driver. Also included is this DeskPi branded power adapter which supplies up to 5 volts, 3 amps, and 18 watts to support power to the Pi and any SSD or M.2 drives you may wish to install. And we'll go ahead and remove it from the packaging. And yes, it is ready to go. Everything is set up. In the next segment, we'll power it up as is and check it out. Let's go ahead and pop in the micro SD card and take a quick look at the case. First off, your micro SD card goes right here. You have two USB 2.0 ports on the front as well as your power button. On the back side, at the far left, you have your USB C power input, two full size HDMI ports, your AV output jack, two USB 2.0 ports on the back of your Raspberry Pi 4, two USB 3.0 ports, one of which will be consumed by the SATA adapter if you choose to connect the dongle from the top USB 3.0 port into the Pi 4 USB 3.0 port. The Pi 4's gigabit ethernet port, as well as a GPIO connector or general purpose input and output. There are plenty of ventilation slots, including on the bottom, as well as the front, and at the top as well. We'll do a quick comparison of the Argon 1 M.2 case, and as you can see, the DeskPi Pro is quite a bit larger. Although, it has a micro SD slot on the front and two extra USB ports, which we'll discuss further in a few moments. Similar to the Argon 1 case, you'll need this adapter to bridge the USB connection to an M.2 or SATA drive to the Pi 4. Of course, this does consume one of the Pi 4's USB 3.0 ports, but it may also complicate connecting some USB 3.0 devices. For example, a simple USB cable will fit just fine. However, some USB thumb drives may be too large to fit in the port. You may want to consider an external USB hub. Now we'll plug in the power, the HDMI connection, and the official Raspberry Pi keyboard and mouse plugged into the very front ports. When the power is red, it's off, and when it's blue, it's on. We'll go ahead and power it up, and once it first boots, there's a few things that you may want to do. For instance, if I go to the upper left-hand corner, and I'll move down to Preferences, 
and select screen configuration. I'll switch my video capture device over so you can get a better look, but we'll go to resolution and set it for 1920 by 1080. Click the little check mark, and now the display is set to 1080p. You could also change it to 4K if you have a 4K monitor. Another setting you may want to make is to go into Raspberry Pi configuration and then move on over to the localization tab and set the Wi-Fi country. It defaults to China on this image, however I'm located in the USA, so I'll simply scroll down and select the United States. Then you want to click OK and then OK again. And then in the upper right hand corner, you want to go ahead and set your Wi-Fi. If you want to connect over Wi-Fi, you could use Ethernet. But I'm going to select my SSID and enter my passphrase. And then shortly after that, it'll be connected to your Wi-Fi network. Once connected, you can launch the Chromium web browser. And I'm not going to speed this portion up at all, so you can see exactly how long it takes for the browser to load. We'll go ahead and maximize the display. And I will speed this part up. I'm going to go ahead and type in wagnerstechtalk.com, press enter, and allow it to load as normal. Again, I'm not speeding up this portion at all. So it renders pretty quick. And from here, you can just scroll on down and check out your favorite website. And now we'll shut down the Pi and power it off and move on to the SSD installation. I picked up a one terabyte PNY SSD for this case, so we'll go ahead and install it. To do that, we'll go ahead and remove the dongle and remove the front two screws on both the front and the back of the unit, starting with the back here. We'll go ahead and remove the acrylic plates and remove all eight screws on the bottom of the case. And then we can simply slide out the assembly. And here's a quick look at the Raspberry Pi 4 with the ice tower cooler and fan all pre-installed. That's pretty neat. I really like the way they designed this case. It's really pretty sharp. Now what I'm about to do is I'm going to take the entire thing apart just so we can get a closer look. But this is not necessary if all you want to do is install the SSD card. But I think it'd be a good idea just so you can see how everything is assembled. We'll go ahead and remove these standoffs, disconnect the GPIO PCB and flip it over and disconnect this 40 pin PFC cable and we'll go ahead and take a look at the connector real quick. There is one screw that needs to be removed on the top so we'll go ahead and remove that and now we should be able to slide the entire assembly right out. There we go and here's a close-up of the ice tower cooler and fan assembly just to take a look at all its awesomeness. <laughs> Now if all you want to do is uh, install the SSD, just simply remove these three screws here. There is a long jumper connector, so be very careful here and pull it straight out. And here you can see where you can install an M.2 drive instead of a 2.5 inch drive. But since I want the 2.5 inch drive installed, I'm going to go ahead and remove these two screws on the back and just remove that adapter plate. So we'll go ahead and unscrew it and slide it right on out. I won't be needing this adapter, so I'm going to just set it off to the side. Now I can take the 2.5 inch SSD and go ahead and plug that in. And now I'll flip it over and install those two screws that were holding the adapter previously. And there we go. The SSD is ready to be installed. Now I'll line up the two jumper pins and bring it on down and go ahead and put those three screws back into the top plate. And now with half of the unit assembled, it's pretty cool that this little micro SD card adapter exists, which allows bringing the SD card functionality to the front of the case. I'll carefully reinstall the Raspberry Pi 4 assembly, starting with the AV jack and the 8-pin PFC cable, and then the power connector, and then reattach the 40-pin PFC cable. And then take the entire GPIO assembly and attach it to the GPIO header pins on the Raspberry Pi 4. Attach this top mounting screw. And then the two bottom standoffs. And after all that's done, you're basically ready to put it back into the case. So just line up the holes, make sure they match up, and slide the assembly in. And then from there, it's just a matter of screwing in the eight screws. So we'll go ahead and do that. I put one on one corner and one on the other, and it helps line up all the other screw holes. 
and then remove the cover to the back plate. Reattach the two screws using the Allen wrench and then repeat the same for the front. Now pat yourself on the back because you are essentially done. And I think it looks a lot better without the protective paper covers. And normally I'm concerned when I have leftover parts, but in this case, not too concerned. I'm not going to be using this anytime soon. Now that we have the SSD installed, we definitely need this adapter now to bridge the connection to the Pi 4. We'll plug in the power and the HDMI and of course our keyboard and mouse yet again. For our first boot, we will need this micro SD card, and that's because our operating system is not yet installed on the new SSD. So we'll go ahead and power it on and boot everything back up. Now we'll launch the Chromium web browser and navigate to raspberrypi.org. And from there, we'll go ahead and select the software link. So click that and scroll down just a little ways until you see the command for installing the Raspberry Pi OS imager, which is right here and we'll just select it and copy it to the clipboard. To run the command, click the terminal icon at the top and then paste in the command that we just copied from the clipboard and press enter. Then press Y and PyOS Imager will be installed. Once it's done, you can just type exit and press enter or just close out of the window in the upper right hand corner. Now let's go ahead and install PyOS to the SSD. To do that, we'll launch the PyOS Imager select choose OS and then we'll go ahead and select Pi OS 32-bit. You can pick another operating system if you prefer. Then we'll select the one terabyte SSD to go ahead and install the operating system too. And now we'll click the right button. And once we do, you will be prompted. If you're sure you want to continue, go ahead and click yes. And then if it asks you for a password, type in Raspberry. The installation will take a few minutes. And once it's done, go ahead and click the continue button and then go ahead and exit out of Raspberry Pi OS Imager. Now we'll go select Logout and shut down, and then we'll go ahead and remove the micro SD card from the DeskPi Pro, and go ahead and put it in a safe place where we won't lose it. And now when you power on the machine, you'll see this where it's resizing the file system, and simply follow the prompts to install Pi OS, and don't forget to set up your network connection and all that other fun stuff. You will then be prompted to reboot. Now, before we move on to the script installation, I want to share some notes with you. First off, the procedure I'm about to show you is going to install the fan control software, which will allow you to adjust how and when the fans kick in. Also, the front USB ports won't be functional until the script is installed. That was one thing that I ran into. And at the time in this video, there was no safe shutdown script using the power button on the front and the command that you enter may differ from what you see here depending on your operating system. I'll place links down below that provide a much more detailed guide on various other aspects of the configuration such as IR setup and much more. Now let's move on to the script installation. Once rebooted, go ahead and click the terminal window again. And from there, we'll enter this command, the git clone command, and press enter once done and this command to change the directory to the DeskPy subfolder. And from there, we'll make the script executable using this command. And finally, we will go ahead and run the installer using the sudo command. And press enter. And now the installation will continue. And once done, it'll show you it'll reboot in five seconds. Now we've rebooted and we'll go ahead and open another command window and type in despy-config. This will launch the fan configuration utility. And here we can set it at certain levels if we want to keep the fan on all the time, or we can adjust it to a level according to the temperature. So now we'll set it for option number two, which is to set the fan at 50%. And let's hear what it sounds like. That was extremely quiet. Let's try it at 100%. If you prefer to go with their suggested defaults, then press option number six and enter. And here you enter your temperature threshold and fan speed level. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter those according to their default settings that you see above. 
and I will use those values throughout the rest of this video. Now let's run some quick temperature tests and I'll give you my final thoughts on the DeskPi Pro. To perform the stress test, I did install a utility called stress and ran this command, which I'll paste in the description below in case you want to do the same. The temperature test ran for a period of about 10 minutes. The starting CPU temperature was 44.3 degrees Celsius and it maxed out at around 51.6 degrees and it would drop a little bit and never exceeded the 51.6 degrees Celsius again. Demonstrating that the DeskPi Pro does an excellent job of keeping your Raspberry Pi 4 cool. The least expensive way to purchase this case is to purchase it from DeskPi.com for around $60. It does not include a Raspberry Pi 4 and you will have to fully assemble it yourself. Or if you prefer you can purchase it from Amazon.com which includes the Raspberry Pi 4 and it's already assembled for you. First I'll talk about what I like most about this case. The SD card is accessible from the front. It includes two extra USB ports also on the front. It has excellent cooling, a solid construction, and supports both M.2 and 2.5 inch SSD drives. It has an ice tower cooler that's included and a configurable fan speed. Now we'll look at what I like least about this case. There is no button safe shutdown. The GPIO connection is a very tight fit. You can make it work, but it is very tight. And in terms of price, while it's higher than similar cases, the package does include the power adapter, which brings the price within a few dollars of competing cases, which does not include the power adapter. I hope you enjoyed this look at the DeskPi Pro case and found it helpful. If you did, please click the like button. If you'd like to see more from Wagner's Tech Talk, please click the subscribe. And with that, I will talk to you very soon.